we were lying in bed and she just said, I can't have this guy out there knowing that he took a whole neighborhood for like about $25,000. No one offense? So I knew him and it was like, oh, perfect. Frank's going to do her fence. No problem. You need money. We'll get it to you. This is going to be such a pain. He collected the money and realized he was going to be in the hole. He took off. 50 homeowners at one time? How could we have been so stupid? Oh, yeah, baby. My goals. On the money. We kind of wanted to start a brand new life in a brand new home, you know, yeah. start off with a nice family, you know, try to get everything all done up with everything being brand new. When you buy a new house, does it come with a fence? No. Does it come with a garden? No. I guess this is an opportunity for contractors to step in, knock on your door and say, hey, you looking for a fence? You looking for a deck? Good little business. Michelle! Hey, how are you? Good to see you again. Thanks for coming. Nice to see you. This is where you're going to see all the bad guys come in because it's business galore. So tell me about it. Fencing. <laughs> well, we hired a contractor to do our fence. Um, he worked for our builder previously. This is the guy that goes around when you have complaints. You have a couple of pop screws, a couple of things you don't like on the trim or the walls, and he'll fix it up. People, you know, they got close to him on a personal basis. He was uh, always driving around in the truck. Driving around our neighborhood, you know, go by, we'd wave at him. He got to all 50 of them, and they said, okay, let's do a fence. He gave him a deal, they couldn't refuse. In order to do our fence, he came around to all 50 homes and required a deposit. And of half of the price, Pretty much half the deposit. $500 approximately a house. Some people paid more, some people paid the full amount of the fence, and nobody's seen or heard from him since. Just tell me it's not all cash, so everybody paid by check. 90% of these houses paid cash. No paper trail, no chance in really help trying to go to court to get any money back. And it's a lot of money, especially for some of the people in our area that are living on pensions, disability, lots of new families. And it's a new house, so it's a constant expense. Think about it. You have no paper trail. The judge is going to say, no paper trail. It's your word against his. He did that to a few people where he really put them on the spot saying, if you don't give me the money now, then your neighbor's not going to get their fence and you're going to be responsible. And how are you going to feel if you slow down the project of the fences? And he gave a few people a guilt trip. And a lot of people left. It left him standing in the driveway, drove to the convenience search of the bank machine, came back and handed him the cash. Michelle had fire. She was lying there in bed with her husband saying, you know what, something's got to be done about this. He's just going to be moving on from street to street taking people. And she was right. I said to my husband, like, we've got to do something because he's just going to get away. Nobody can even get a hold of him. But she at least had the... To get up and go, to knock on everybody's door in this neighborhood and say, hey, we got taken. Did you get taken? What's your name? Did you pay cash? So we took leadership of our street and got everybody's information and contracts, how much money, and started on filing a complaint. But if the people stood up and said, hey, I've had enough of this crap, things are going to change. You know, it's not about the money now. It's about stopping this guy in his tracks from doing this again to other naive homeowners. Ready to take a look? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Might as well see what I have to fix. These are your neighbors. (laughs) These are some of our neighbors, yes. How you doing? I, I take it everybody's been taken here, yes? So who all paid cash here? Put up your hand. Who paid checks? Put up your hand. He was scratching off on the checks. People were writing it to the actual construction company. He scribbled out his business name, put in his personal name, and initialed these people's checks. Nobody you paid in full? Cash? Check in cash. And there are a few people who paid the full amount up front because they just had the money and they figured get it over and done with, and then we don't have to worry about it. I know, obviously it's not done. As you can see, it's stopped halfway. Did he put these on? I put those on just for safety reasons. Smart move. Yeah, I didn't want any kids or anything falling in. You call these balls? <laughs> That's less than a foot. <laughs> Looking around, I see holes that are, are not even the right distance apart. It's as if they just picked up the auger and just drilled one here, drilled one here. When they first came, the one kid didn't even know how to use yeah. the measuring tape and we had to show them. I don't want to see the concrete out of the ground like that. What happens is when they bring the concrete up on top of the ground, the frost will grab it, pick the pole up out of the ground. You ever seen the poles come out of the ground? Your fence shifts up? That's why. It was totally unorganized. Didn't have any paper to write on. He was writing numbers on his hand. It's definitely not that good. We don't want to see drywall screws at all in the hangers. I don't even know we see that this is twisting, pulling it out. We see no nails whatsoever in the top, into the 4x4. So unfortunately, this fence would only last a couple of years and pretty well fall down anyways. Was it surveyed? Are they deep enough? Is it built properly? In this case, it's not even not built properly. It's not even built. The only fence that looks good is the one the man finished himself. Yeah. Let's just hope that's in the right spot. And, and that, I, I have an issue with that. I don't think it's in the right spot either. I that's, will find that's out. That's my concern right there. I will find out. Mm-hmm. Number one, I'm going to bring in the right people. I'm going to bring in a surveyor and survey this whole area. I'm just taking a look down. Look down. <laughs> yeah. I bet you could have built that better. Oh, yes, definitely. We're going to fill in the old holes, bore all brand new holes, and obviously go buy a whole bunch more new wood and do this again. 
day of pulling poles. 90% of these houses paid cash. How could we have been so stupid? These guys are just setting up a survey. Let's pull out this panel. Drilling about 450 holes here. Uh, you want to make sure you locate all utility lines and mark them. Call before you dig. Before we do anything more, let's try and make it safe. Let's get in the survey, guys, because that's number one to see if they've even got the holes on the line here. Now you know what I have to say. It. Survey says. <laughs> okay, let's do it. On the money. Yeah. We've set the iron bar on a one meter offset, it's back here. Okay. And so we, if we ever screw up, we know it's from one meter off. That's right, you can go right off of that. This is right on the property line. Okay. The last one we measured to is that there, and it's getting up like nine inches offline. So this guy's got more land than he should, and these people don't have enough. So what are you gonna do now? Are you gonna set up your, you're gonna bring your tripod to the other side? Is that the idea? Well, on the lines that we've done already back here, we're gonna set up and do the sidelines. Okay. So, and then uh, move down? Yeah, that's right. So you can start at that end. All right, so then we don't waste time. You get the side done, and we'll that's start right. working on this. We'll just do it like a machine, from one end right through to the other. Good. Well, we uh, surveyed all the properties and we know that all the fences are out of line. So yep. they're not on the property line. You actually have less property because you're on this side, right? Yes. You have less property than you should have mm -hmm. by about eight inches. So does that matter to you? Yes, it Well, does. it will matter in the long run if we have to sell. That's right? the point. That's the point. Because if somebody checks the land survey when you go to sell the house and mm -hmm. they say, hey, the fence is, is on our property. We want that extra eight to 10 inches. Mm -hmm. We want you to move it. It has to be on the property line. Government laid down the lines, and that's where it's got to go. It's got to go. We'll have a gate that swings this way so we don't disrupt your downspout. For me, building a house is bigger than this. How about I move the top to the back? But 50 families? It's huge. I'm going to do my damnedest to talk to him yeah. and try and convince him to let us fix it. i got a lot of people I've got to deal with and calm down and put fires out. It's a small amount of money to everyone, and I mean a small amount, because all I'm going to do is take on what they didn't pay. So in other words, if it's $1,000 and they paid 500 I want 500 and I'll finish it. We have to because these people have lost. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I got, I got a problem with that. But is this going to be? easy? No, not a chance. We're going to bring the bobcat up and we don't want to damage anything on the outside that we're going to have to fix. So as we bring the bobcat in and it wheels in, we don't want to ruin the grass. Once we get going straight, we'll be okay. What I want to do is pull out at least three poles. Let's see how far they're in the ground. Let's see how they're cemented in. It'll tell us. Nice try for effort there. That sucks. Hit the shovels. Man, this is going to be a pain. even more depressing because it looks like all of them are two feet in the ground we want to be a minimum three feet well we've had some cold winters here and i'll tell you we've had the frost down 40 inches easy so we want to we go four feet we're guaranteed and make sure we cone the bottom of the hole so when the concrete is filled in there it's impossible for it to lift the ground is pulling it in place never ever bring the concrete up over ground always bring it within the ground level itself I worked out the material list and I fell over. Well, it's 3,500 or 4,000 Linear feet. feet. Yeah. So we're looking at 454 by fours. 10,000. One by six is by five feet. 10,000. The whole day of pulling poles. So I figure out the material cost. We're in the range of 40 to $45,000 in material. He was charging them 50,000. What does that tell you? He wasn't serious. Not a chance He was hell. messing around. Not a chance at all. This is going to be such a pain. How many would pull so far? One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> don't count them, Mike. <laughs> I don't no. want to know. And this poor guy over here is now the enemy. Like I said, I'm specific like everybody else. Yay! That sucks. Get the shovels. Man, this is going to be a pain. After Frank disappeared and took everybody's money, you know what, it kind of brought the community together because we had a common goal now. I personally believe that this is a blessing in disguise. I didn't know my neighbor behind me until all this started. We get to know everybody more, everybody get together. Everyone is, you know, kind of bonded tighter because you now we got issues, right? So now we got to bond tighter to, you know, fight this guy back. Another case of man versus machine. They've got a, an hour on it. We just started taking this one out. We'll see if they can. Uh, they see if they can get it out there. You know what? I'll try to dig it out with the forks like I was doing earlier. Yeah, get out. 
Let's just dig it out. Yeah, we got this out. You're definitely buying the first round. You gotta win this one. <laughs> Tired of losing. They're getting a little scared, aren't they? Yeah. What we want to do first of all is come eight feet off the existing cedar fence, which is by far a superior fence than really the one we're putting up. It's what I'd like to do, but that's a lot of money, and nobody has that kind of money. So we'll come eight feet off. We'll definitely mark where we're going to join in properties, and then we're going to balance out the posts so they're equal. I, I don't want to go eight feet, eight feet, eight feet, and then two feet. So we want to balance it so it looks good. We have to think as aesthetics as well as proper structure. Seven. Probably take just in the setup time to mark all this, just this area, not way down there, just this area. Let's say it takes two hours. Two hours of setting it upright makes it real easy in the end. I dig them properly, I can fix the old, and it's gonna look damn good. We have a big rock under there. Surprise. Our poles aren't that far to ground. These are 10 foot poles. When you turn and look at the 10 foot poles that way, they're way out of the ground. So when we shook that fence, it's very loose. The further we go on the ground, we serve a couple of purposes. One, we don't have to worry about frost lifting it. Two, structure, we have an incredibly strong fence. So let's go the extra distance. We have the machine, do it. Four feet, plenty enough. Right now, we've just uh, drilled everything to four feet. The object is to get the other holes filled, especially the ones like this one here that we have to drill in. So I want this fold nice and tight so I can get that pin down exactly where I want that hole. So from there, we'll put the poles in. We're going to put some caution tape up. That's going to let everybody know where the holes are. Nobody's going to fall in them. When we're getting ready to cement, as we're setting them up, I'm going to cone the bottom of the hole slightly out. What that does is acts as, a, as an anchor. It cannot lift. So the frost in the wintertime can't grab it and lift that post up. It stays still. My question is, uh, he's got an extended fence. I got an air conditioning standing right there. And we just barely squeezed by with uh, the air conditioning. So uh, hopefully uh, Mike can help us out and solve our problems. and with a double fence and maybe it'll work out for us. I cannot force him to take it out, but I'm gonna highly recommend he does because now he's impinging on his neighbor. Peter, how you doing? Nice to see you, buddy. Good, good, good. Aretha? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Let's go take a look at your fence and we'll discuss the issues. We're still cool, right? You know, there's, there's no harsh feelings. I mean, the only issue we had was the, um, the whole fence thing here. Frank, I'm not gonna do her in the morning, say that, you know, we're not gonna sign you if you guys can't decide on the extra standard defense or whatever, right? His AC, he wanted to make sure he can get by his AC, and we wanted to make sure that our door was enclosed for our daughter's safety. So pretty much what he did was he just kept on playing me and Peter, you know, talking bad about his wife and, and his family, and then went probably over there and did the same to me, you know what I mean? So he just played us, and I was getting ready to go out in the morning, and uh, he stuck me, and I had to sign a contract then. What I would have done in the first place is I would have put a fence in right across here, with a gate here, and a gate here. That way the fence continues, you have your own property, your own property, and then I would have put a fence at the front with a single gate so you have privacy here. Rather than doing this and, and making this a big problem. Yeah, that's what we wanted to do initially. Let's put two separate gates in and just one neutral gate at the back there. But unfortunately, it didn't work that way. I'm going to recommend it to everybody that wants this gate down here. Instead of doing that, stop it here, which I will do for everyone. And then all they have to do in the future is build it from house to house. Nice and simple. And anybody and almost everybody can do this. And you got your handy. I mean, he hired you, didn't he? Mm -hmm. You're the guy he ripped off. <laughs> he had a few of his own people, but he actually had uh, one of our neighbors who wasn't working at the time. Um, he asked him, you know, do you want to help out? Oh, nothing else about to my backyard, right? So why not? Make an extra buck, right? So he had told him, to begin with, I have no experience building fences. Oh, don't worry, you know, I have some guys who've been working with me for three years coming out. And, you know, as long as you know how to follow direction pretty good, you'll be good. And it ended up just being you and some other guy. Yeah, that, that was it. He says, uh, do you know how to swing a hammer? Yeah, there you go. It was the first time he built a fence, so, you know, nothing against him. He should have been showed by who hired him how to build a proper fence. My direct neighbors, the ones I, I, I talked to, you know, they were like, you know, hey, what's going on? You know, where's the guy and stuff like that, right? I was like, man, I have no clue. People are knocking on his door all the time, and he's being harassed, and he, even up, he couldn't deal with it anymore, he said, and he had to quit because, you know, it was getting too much, you know, with, the, with all the neighbors and what Frank was doing to them. The distant people in the neighborhood, he just saw my face and you know, had no idea. Well, they didn't come out and say, but I, you know, I can read faces, like, I can tell, you know, there was some kind of, you know, animosity. When it comes to Frank, he had nothing to do with it. He got taken along for the ride just like the rest of us. Like I said, I'm just a victim like everybody else. You get paid anything? No. You're no. kidding me. No, not at all. He's a real dog, isn't he? Okay, so our 4x4 four four is three and a half inches thick. So what I've done is I've gone an inch and three quarters off our center point. So I'll make sure now that my string stays on the side so that when my marking for the 4x4, four four, it just touches the 4x4. Four four. Right. And I'll bring it over to the other one. We can determine the exact distance away from the pin. 
Gogi's a new member of the team. She's an apprentice carpenter with some skills, with a hell of a lot of desire to learn, and I like that. That's exactly what I want to see. Well, it took me 15 minutes, but that's perfect. And if you look down that line, straight. Okay, I'm fussy. 900 feet, I want to be I want to be able to look from this end right down and not see another post. In other words, I'm looking at one four by four and everything should be in line. The crown will be where the bow is. It looks like that to me from this side. I totally agree. So here's what we're going to do. I totally agree. I want you to put an X on the inside of the crown. By the time I'm done, you should be able to look right down the four by fours as long as we accept and put the crowns in the right way because if the crown and the lumber say this is the crown, if I have it on this side, it will want to bow this way. So if I keep my crowns in line, in other words, I keep my crown on this side, it won't bow because we're holding the fence together. Now this may take an extra 10 minutes of our time to actually go through all these posts. In total, maybe an hour or two, but they'll never move. To me, this is a simple job. Make sure it's level, make sure it's proper, make sure it's deep enough, and for years to come, everybody's gonna say, that fence is still standing. Okay? Good. We have the concrete coming in at 1.30. So I'm gonna take down all the fencing on this side so we can now work over there. I'm gonna split everybody up, take out as much fence posts as I can, uh, much fence section as I can. And the more we look at it, the more we realize that nothing is on the line and it doesn't surprise me at least. Anna, nice to meet you. I'm Mike. I'm gonna build your fence so you can play in your backyard, is that okay? Good one, with no nails sticking through it. You're paying now? I got a uh, yeah, contract here. Looks like everybody's on board here. That's I nice to so. see. I think so. We're probably about 85% finished. Missing a lattice, missing a few boards. Thanks, buddy. This is good. All right, thank you. We'll see you on your end soon. Excellent. Okay. So it kind of tugs on you to start all over, right? But after you sit down, you think about it. You want a fence that's going to last. You don't want something that after the winter is going to be popping up and you're going to have to replace anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if it rains, it's just going to cost me a whole lot of pain and a whole lot of time. Let's get the poles in the holes. Get these poles in the holes, please. Every pole you see lying down, we gotta get them in the hole. That one, it's coming fast. It's gonna screw every one of my holes. Imagine all these holes are drilled four feet deep. The rain's gonna come, wash it out. It's starting to spit now. So I'm gonna have to pull every pole after the rain, ream them out, put them back in, and reset everything. This has just added a whole day to my project due to Mother Nature. Mike, stop, clean up right now. Yep. You're like a magnet for lighting right now. Uh, we're gonna stop, we're gonna pick up everything we can right now, haul it all this way, let's get everything off the properties and clean up. Let's get four by fours if we can, get them in the hole. If not, let's get those black covers and hit every hole you can. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna rain. Try and get all the material in as quick as we can. guys. That one's out. We had a bit of rain last week and put us down for a few days. Rather lucky, not a lot of the holes got full of water, but right now any posts you see out of the ground, we've had to take them out, pull out some water, get down, get that muck out of the bottom because I need that room to move the pool around. Besides, just, we don't want to leave the muck in. Most people would. I'm not going to. The guys are right on it. So we have the concrete coming in about an hour and 15 minutes and we're going to get this right back in a place where we were ready last time before we got caught by rain. We'll get these cemented in today. Four by four, that directly to the end. Damon will run, Adam will run, and I'll run. Okay. Um, and you and Micah can be first relief. Sure. We can put all these four by fours in, continuing to go down. Then we're going to start working backwards. Everybody else stand at the hole, and then you just direct the concrete in with the shovel, right? This is my access point to get in here. I'm going to be able to truck through all the time, bring in the material. And as we close off each section, we will not have to go back that way again. Dan, shovel this side, please. That's it. OK, keep going. Let's get that concrete a little more wet, please. I'm using a six foot level so I can take full advantage of my pole height. Okay, nobody hit that pole. Okay, start with my right. Good, thank you. Keep our string, we're gonna need it again. Have a whole lot of fencing to do. We've probably just done, once they're cemented in, two-thirds, excuse me, one-third. We have two-thirds to go. It's a whole lot of fencing. This is a corner post. This is where they tie in, so we will have the tee with the string. This is a crucial post. Six meters of concrete should do, I'm gonna guess, 60 poles. 
know, I said there was maybe two thirds left. I was wrong. There's 454 by fours total. So if we've only done 60, what does that tell you? We put a dent in it, that's about it. It'll be a long day. Dean, what's up, buddy? How's it going, Mike? We're cementing away, as usual. Concrete. Well, you're not using air and drain, are we? Yes, we are. The fence pulls like this, the groundwater is going to get down into there, the moisture. And if the frost goes deep enough, we're going to have a tendency for things to slide down there, too. So when that water wants to expand, it's going to go into the little air bubbles that we've air and drained into it. So we have 25 MPA here. 25 MPA with air, and it's what we call an alter mix. So we actually have what we call a mid-range water reducer in there. And that's helping you, you know, and help with the workability of the concrete without adding a lot of water to it. Everything is going to be the same. This will be the one that marks everything. Our hanger goes in place center with the post. Here's our T, our uh, vertical one, and then our horizontal. How's your bubble, Holmesy? I'm good. Mm. Always mark the top. That'll screw us up. Okay. Uh, we hate. We're different here. This one here? I can see it. So right now we're off, aren't we? So yes, we, we mark the bottom? Yeah, yeah, we mark the bottom on this one, this one, and that one. You know what? Let's just redo it. Okay, okay. let's bring it back. Mark an X right here. Okay. Okay, we have to step down. Three inches good for you? Yeah. Now the final test. Actually look down and see how straight that is. It's perfect. Look down that. Is that straight or what? It makes me very happy. We're gonna make a fence now, Home Depot. Okay, I'm watching you. Okay. Ah, that's what I wanted to see. You gotta check the crown or you, you know, you don't last around here. Just go ahead and cut, 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 put them in. And go back, screw. Okay. That's not bad. You're gonna split the cost with me, so it's not gonna cost me much extra. Good job. You teed across the front like that? The guy doesn't want to pay. I'd like to take care of it. How do I deal with this? I'm used to dealing with one family at a time. Cut, cut, cut. Come in. It's perfect. Got a little bit of wood for us. How much is this? A lot and little. That's a whole lot of fence. Did you see that load out there? That's half of it. Holy cow. <laughs> You're talking about 5,000 fence boards there. We're going to put in the 1x6s today. We're going to show how to do the proper lattice and the proper tops. I think what I'd like to do is take the middle and some right-hand sides and go right down as much as we can because we can always walk around there. But I want to leave this side open so we can walk through. Had a few complaints already. The fence is not high enough. We want it higher. Go figure. Everybody's become friends and now they want to block off each other. I like the six foot. Look at it. I get on the other side comes up to here it's six feet but this is semi-privacy you're going to see your name i mean think about it contractor comes in screws the moiling and this is true he's part of the ugly okay he's not the bad he's the ugly takes everyone's money it's fully intentional going to take their money everybody gets together starts talking they contact me we come in to help but now everybody's fighting that they can see their neighbor Because the boards are staggered, you can see through the fence on an angle, and we want that because as the sun rises across the sky, we want that sun to come through the fence and help our grass. Hi, neighbor. You know, say hi to your neighbor. Nicely wrapped. We're going to see better boards underneath, obviously. We're going to look through these and make sure we don't use these guys or we'll rip them down. You see a little bit of a rip on the board. I don't like that. So let's pick and choose the ones we don't like. We will send back. Okay, we can see because of the grading that we're going to have to cut some of these boards. No choice in it. No. <laughs> it makes for one hell of a lot of cutting. One down, 999. How many boards? I don't even know. 10,000, one by six. Possibly have to cut about 9,000 of them. That's a lot of cutting. Now, this is another important reason we want to make sure that our four by fours are level. Because our first board is going to be right against it. But we will put this in without worrying about it. And we will level our second one. Totally our fence boards. Nice tool. Something else we'll do is we're going to take our time and not just grab boards and throw them up and fire like crazy. We're going to make sure the side we see is a nice side. So I'm just going to keep going with 57 and a half, which seems to be working good on this one. Yeah. Okay, I got this one at 57 and a half. Just put it up there and see if you want it higher. Because I think maybe 57 might be more realistic. Or what do you think? Uh, that's not bad. Okay. As long as we can get in there with a weed eater. That's much better. I put it up to 95. Okay, are we going to fire the barbecue up? Yeah, they can just put it right here. 
<laughs> the cooler here. We got shade now and everything. Look at you're sweating. You probably want to stand in the shade. A couple of chairs and sit here. Have a beer. Get cards. <laughs> better get up another slice and see what we have. Dwayne, it's on your shirt. Oh my. Is this yours? Yeah. Looks like you know what you're doing. You're on the money. It's good. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Good job. Do you tee it across the front like that? Yeah. You built fences before, haven't you? No. I know fence builders that don't do that, and that's the way to do it. You know what? That's not bad. That's not bad. All you have to do is total your material cost, less your gate. Yeah, is that true? I'll get all the receipts and okay. Well, you, you know, you figure it out, whatever, 100 bucks of material. And then just take it as a linear footage, measure everything, and these people, you can divide it by 50. That's what they owe, that's what he owes. And I'll honor that because that's fair. So I spoke to your neighbor. Yeah. He's actually not a bad guy, and I've reasoned with him and yeah. said to him, I believe you should pay half of the material. Cool. The guy doesn't want to pay. I believe it should be three, $350, 400 maximum. All right. Well, he wanted to pass these doors, side entrance for his kid, you know, his kid put their side entrance, we go right in the backyard, then not have to worry about him. I said, okay, no problem, I agree with that. You're gonna split the cost with me, so I'm gonna cost me much extra. So I went in and did it. I trusted the guy. Appreciate it. My pleasure. And hopefully we keep the peace. Definitely. That's most important. We got crepes for the end. Yeah. Nail them in. All right. Yeah. We'll put a little bit of glue on that before we put that in. Make sure we do a little bit of glue across that top. Especially, most importantly, is the top one. 11 inches. And then our yeah, top plate, we'll half. give a half and a half. Do we leave a little bit of play? Go 11 and a quarter, 11 and an eight? No. What we want to do is if we find, because many times when they cut the lattice, and I like this because this is more than a semi-privacy lattice. You're right on 12 yeah. here. So what we can do is grab that at the end. And we'll find that we can, like at the accordion, we can pull it a bit oh. and reduce the height. Okay. Oh, that's good to that's know. That's a trick, Mr. Moore. That's now, we really just reduced thing. it by... Almost a quarter inch. Right. When it comes to my top piece that we have our groove 2 by 4 unfortunately, we cannot seem to get these in 10-foot lengths, which I would prefer based on 8-foot sections. We cut off the other piece that gives us... Absolutely. And then cripple. Yep. Each piece gives us the two cripples, right? Yep. So we can't get them in 10s, so we're going to have to cut some aids to create our end, end pieces. So what I want you to do is take your piece, look down it. I want to see every top piece with a crown in it this way. I want the crown on this side. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because when, once it goes down... Well, it'll just hug the... Uh... Correct. If we put bottom. this in place, it holds it tight. Imagine if we had the crown upwards, right? Over the time, that's going to continue to rise upwards, and that lattice is going to fall right out. That piece has to be replaced. So you're going to look down all these beautiful babies that you're going to cut. We know we want to keep this one for the top because the crown's in the right direction. Gotcha. If we think ahead and we do all this, it lasts forever. So the point is, is that homeowners, in this case, spend their money properly. If we find ones with the crown on the other side, they're the ones we cut for our Save, pieces. save for the cripples. Cool, man. Okay. nicer than the less privacy lattice or the uh, semi-privacy lattice. I'm real tight here, so you can take an eighth if you need it. I'm trying to get my fingers in these holes. There we go. So this one's leaning this way a little bit, so that means we got to cut this piece shorter so it pulls it straight. 78 and an eighth. we were looking to do and our main thing too was to stop this guy in his tracks and let him know that we were serious the thought in your head thinking that you know this guy's getting away with it that's the biggest thing you know I mean? yeah we're all getting our fence you know we're all happy now that everything's getting completed but there's that piece behind you know in the back of your head thinking you know it's like this guy got away with all this money mm -hmm. and he doesn't even care we're now going to build a gate show how to do it properly we have a great package called the instigate this is absolutely brilliant the metal angles on the corners works for me 100 percent Someone was using their head when they designed this. We're going to bridge from one side of the house to the other side of the house. We're going to glue our contact at this point, nail it, make sure we are 100% level, which we are, and that's exactly what I want to see. We're going to also use a heavy-duty construction adhesive on the wall and tap con our 2x4 on the wall. So we have 45 and 3 quarters. I'm going to make it 45 and 3 eighths. Glue is just a little extra insurance for strength. Glue it and screw it, you'll never have an issue. All right. Good. We'll cover one side and then overlap the other side. Get your bikes. We are good. Look at that. We are good. This is the part we want to stay neat on, so all our screws are going to be nice and level across and not up and down. We stay neat. Is 
we want that is perfect. So we only have to build 51 more to get the latches. Get the latches on. The next 10 minutes, the concrete truck comes. We got to get the rest of the poles in today. So uh, gratefully, we had a couple of construction guys that heard we were here, offered their help, and they're coming in to help us help these people. So this is great. You know, we'll just uh, start knocking off this fence. You guys ready to work? Let's do it. The idea is to leave two sections open near the fence so we can get through and just knock off everything we can along this way and of course continue the center fence. Watch. We just arrived on site so we just want to get our tools out and uh, get everybody uh, equipped and uh, then we're going to start nailing some fence boards. That's a smart move. I like that. panic here is uh, the concrete's here and the concrete truck can't stay here so we're trying to get as many posts in as possible today. Do you think you want to be a construction worker or try getting in on this? See if you can keep up. We're all done. We're gonna party it up. Yeah, we we need to celebrate this whole thing. Like, you know, it's finally done, it's over. Now all we need is just to celebrate and enjoy it. We're having a fence completion party. Good, 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 good. That's for sure, a nice big barbecue, a few beers. Sounds good to me. Well, that castle may need a bit of work. It's not very rigid, <laughs> but you know what? It works for the kids. I love my job. I love building. I love making changes, fencing, decks, houses, additions. That's what I do. I love it. 52 houses of fencing is a little monotonous for me and a little too much, and I'd rather leave that to the fence and deck specialists. But for me, who is going to help these people? Well, you know what? You feed them, you let the kids play, and everybody's just smiling. That's it. That's it. Great turnout. Happy everybody showed up. The law states outright that as long as the contractor works does something on your home or in the area of your home for you, it is a civil matter. If there's a dispute, financial, work, it doesn't matter. You must hire a lawyer and go to court. Who on this street is going to hire a lawyer by losing $500? No one. People shell out a lot of money for their house. You know what I mean? And all the things that go along all with it. All the things that go along with it, you know, and then somebody taking your money without anything being done, that's a big hit to the wallet, you know? So yeah. for Mike to come in and help us out, we really did a lot. Oh, nice and fresh. Oh, you made my day. Right in front of you, is 52 families that got ripped off. This is one street. We know he took two other streets. What does it have to take before someone says, you gotta go to jail? There you go, sir. Can I get something on it for you? You do it? Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Get a little bit. The government has decided to investigate him, and that couldn't make me happier. Why? Normally they wouldn't, because under the circumstances, again, like the police, it becomes a civil matter. But in this case, 52 families on the same street were taken by the same contractor. So I'm kind of hoping that he gets what he gives, because I do believe in that. I do believe you do get what you give. Jeez. If Mike hadn't stepped in to help us out, which is amazing that he did that, I don't know where we would be. We would probably still be sitting saying, what are we going to do? This is for you, Mike. No way. You deserve that Thank after you. hard work you did. You deserve Thank that. You so Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Should I open this now? Yes. yes. This is exciting. <laughs> Wow! Just the right way. Oh! Did you see that? That's a body massage. <laughs> <laughs> and for those you know, I'm because I worked there. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Hey, I'm paper! When Michelle got on board, she really got the whole street involved and got everybody on board. Michelle and Adrian, I mean, I don't think we've ever been this close before. Thank you for helping with our fans, your friends, Buick and Cadillac. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank so you very much, everyone. Nice. Thank you, guys. Oh, oh we got to the Cadillac. We love food. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I already had one, but it's going to happen. I didn't eat today. We have dessert? We have dessert, come on. 
Oh, that's very nice of you people. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to eat this and I'm gonna have to eat yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. It's nice when everybody gets together and does something, okay? Eh? Well, honestly, for me, this is a very <laughs> big day of ironing. Whole street gets together, calls me, we come in to put in fences. They all like each other, all getting along, everything's going happy, all the fences go up and knock everybody off. All of a sudden, nobody knows anybody anymore. And now, we're gonna go back out and have a street party, all together, to come back to all separate. I had two burgers, I'm telling you, okay? Okay, be our little secret. Cool? Thank you.